I'll go ahead and get us started. So as you can see in the agenda today, we're gonna do some introductions. We're gonna hear um, some updates from Valley Air District on the Clean Air um, Rooms pilot program. Um, then we'll uh, go into just strategy and what we're gonna be looking for as we're aligning, not just with the Clean Air program, but what we wanna see um, for our upcoming implementation of the air purifiers. What are some of the subcommittee uh, eligibility, demographics tracking, things like that. Um, and then have a quick discussion on uh, community-based organizations distribute, uh, distributors, or do we wanna go with um, another distributor um, and understand what that looks like. Um, ideas for engaging with um, weatherization um, and what's happening at the county and at the state level. Um, any uh, updates from CARB and the implementation plan and then wrap up with questions and next steps. But uh, let's go ahead and um, uh, start off with introductions. Um, we could do our name, our role, and uh, one thing we're looking forward to um, in the summer. And so I'll go ahead and kick us off and then I'll go ahead and popcorn from there. Hey everyone, Elaine Labson. I am the Health Equity Director with Little Manila Rising, overseeing our DAWN program, which stands for Decreasing Asthma Within Neighborhoods. Um, and one thing that I'm looking forward to this summer is, um, and even though it's gonna be really hot, is just uh, the baby shower that I have next week. And so really, really excited um, to get some family together um, and safely distance as best as possible. Um, I'll go ahead and pass it to you, Kevin. Hi, Kevin Hamilton, Central California Asthma Collaborative. Uh, he, him, pronouns. Uh, thing that I'm looking forward to this summer at this point. Um, I've already been to Lake Tahoe <laughs> so for a week. So uh, I'm looking forward to cool days in October, because <laughs> it's 104 today. And I'll pass it on to uh, Kyle. Hey, all right, thank you, Kevin. Hey, everybody, I'm Kyle Goff. Uh, I am with CARB. I am the lead staff on the uh, incentives for, for community air protection, <laughs> or, or CAP incentives, as we love to say, because you know, we love our acronyms. Um, Oh man, what am I looking forward to? The, oh, uh, pronouns he, him, his. Uh, but uh, as far as what I'm looking forward to this summer, uh, I mean, I hate to just glom onto what Kevin said, but uh, I love cold temperatures. Cannot wait for that October weather. Um, but besides that, interested in you know, maybe getting a little camping done this summer? That would be cool. I don't do enough camping, mm -hmm. uh, but no definite plans. <laughs> Uh, as far as who to popcorn it over to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna popcorn it over to Stephanie. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Stephanie, I use she, hers pronouns, and I am air quality specialist in the community strategies and resources department at the air district. And something I'm looking forward to, I'm going to maybe go the opposite way of Kevin and Kyle is I was thinking in the car the other day, I'm very grateful of these like long summer days that we have. So I'm um, looking forward to the rest of summer of having like long days um, because I don't do well in the winter when it's like dark at 5 p.m. when I get out of work. Um, and I will popcorn over to Eric. All right. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, yes, I'm the newest member under Jessica's team under Community Strategies and Resources. Um, so something that I'm looking forward to in the summer. Hmm. I'm a huge cyclist, as Janine knows, so maybe cooler weather for cycling, <laughs> going on long bike rides. Um, that's what I look forward to in the summer. And I'll go ahead and go next. Uh, Jessica Olson, I use she, hers pronouns. I um, am the director of community strategies and resources. I only have two people on my team, and they're both here. It's Stephanie and Eric. Um, and then we collaborate with our outreach and incentives team for something like this. So just for full transparency, so folks know, um, we brought Eric on to sort of train him. Stephanie, she's our main liaison. And then when you meet um, the other two folks, Janine and Juan Luis, they are both 
in different capacities working on this project. So I just kind of wanted to announce that. Um, and just something I'm looking forward to this summer, we have some friends coming into town that we have not seen since pre-COVID times. They live across the country. They had a baby the same time we did. Um, so connecting with people, which is still happening in like this, I don't know, post-COVID era, but you know, in the space that we're in now. Um, so that's happening in about a month or so. And hopefully it's not super smoky when they get here because we would love they've never been to Yosemite and that's what we really want to do. And I'll go to Janine and then Juan Luis so we can just kind of round out our district folks. Thanks, um, Janine Tackett, supervisor in the grants department. Um, and um, she, her, and let's see, um, as Eric mentioned, um, bike riding is always something that I look forward to, whether it's summer or winter, but I do have a trip coming up in about a week's time. So I will be taking my bike along with my travel trailer up to the high mountains, up to Wishon Village, uh, the Wishon Res Reservoir up above Shaver Lake and spending a week camping up there and riding my bike, kayaking, going on hikes. Um, so super excited and looking forward to that. Um, but also looking forward for uh, continued efforts on air filtration because we've got a lot of that going on here. So thanks so much. Mm -hmm. And I'll pass it to Juan Luis. Thank you, Janine. And hello, everyone. This is Juan Luis Carranza, Senior Communications Rep for the Outreach and Communications Department here at the Valley Air District. Uh, looking forward to do more hiking, really going, wanting to go back to Yosemite and the Sequoias. Hopefully, we don't get any crazy fires, fingers crossed. So yeah, definitely looking forward to, to more hiking activity. And then I'll pass it on to Cynthia Pinto. Yeah, thank you, Juan. Uh, Cynthia Pinto Cabrera, she her, hers with CVAC, Central Valley Air Quality Coalition, um, for your reference, Eric. And I'm really looking forward to, I've been trying to get into a little bit more rock climbing recently. So mm -hmm. hopefully um, I can do make some more time to do that um, this summer. I've gone a few times already and wanted to go out there a little bit more. And with that, I'll pass it to Nate. Uh, most exciting thing I can say is I need to get a, my bicycle fixed so I can start riding some of uh, Stockton's new bicycle lanes. So I don't have a specific outdoors trip planned. In the recent past though, I was on this year's version of the Delta protection plan, uh, Delta, I forgot, leadership plan, something or other. So I was on a couple of great field trips recently, one of which was a two and a half hour exclusive uh, boat tour of the Delta. Uh, so I, I've recently had some interesting things like that, but I'm just looking forward to some bicycle riding. I walk a lot, but I need to get back on the two wheels so I can have faster transportation in addition to walking and riding the bus. Thanks, Nate. I think Anthony is joining us. Hello, Anthony. Yes, hi. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Anthony. I am, my pronoun is he, him, his um, project coordinator with Apsara. Um, I am looking forward to spend more time outdoor. I haven't been done, I haven't been doing that for so long because it's been just really hot. I like summer, but I don't like it when it's too hot. So I'm just waiting for like when the weather kind of at the right temperature for me. So mm -hmm. thank you. I'm going to uh, call on Sarong. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, I'm Sarong and I'm with Apsara Association and I'm a community health worker. Um, uh, during the summer, what I'm looking forward to, anything outdoorsy, camping, swimming, bike riding, um, hiking. So um, I'm just hoping that uh, the air quality is um, getting better. Uh, this weekend I went to South Lake Tahoe and we had to, uh, come back come back to town because the the air quality was so bad up there it was really smoky I know mm. smoky and bad <laughs> I know it makes me so sad uh, thank you and then Scott were you, you last I think I am I've been keeping track and so yes uh, I'm I'm it uh, Scott Wall with the California Air Resources Board 
I am the uh, Community Air Protection Program liaison to the community of Stockton, uh, working uh, side saddle with Kyle, who is kind of our incentives uh, specialist. And so um, uh, he, him, his pronouns. And uh, I am most looking forward to um, a trip to Hawaii that I have booked coming up. Um, it's just after Labor Day, so I don't know if it qualifies as summer, but I'm going to call it my summer. So go out and do some snorkeling. I Good think to see you all. for like the solstice and like equinox on autumnal, I think that's technically still summer. I mean, oh, you, you just awesome. can't wear white. Right. Cool. Well, if I'm in Hawaii, I can, but not that's here, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks all. Um, really exciting summer plans, um, but also knowing and understanding that the weather and the heat and also the air quality can impact those. So just making sure that y'all are just maintaining your health and safety when you engage in your activity. Um, but thank you for your intros. We're gonna go um, on to our next item of our agenda, which is the Valley Air District Clean Rooms Program um, updates. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Valley Air. I'll go ahead and start and then I'll kick it to Janine if there's like specific questions. We're definitely gonna do like a little high level right now. We met with almost all of you, most of you, I think maybe with the exception of one or two, um, a couple of days ago um, to talk a little bit about the details of our pilot program that we have. So because we are recording and just to let other folks know that might view this later, we have a valley-wide clean air rooms pilot program, which is essentially a valley-wide, uh, much more pared down version of your SERP measure that you have all been discussing for the past um, you know, half a year, but not a little bit more. And so the reason um, that it is a pilot program and the reason that um, it's happened so much, like you didn't hear about this the last subcommittee meeting is that it happened very, very quickly. Um, it was an ask of us from a lot of community groups and it was an action that our board took just at their last board meeting to allocate just 250,000, which in terms of the valley-wide program isn't very much, but it's certainly good enough to start us off and get hopefully the most in need folks an in-home plug and play air purifier um, within the next few weeks. We are planning and we are still on track um, to launch hopefully sometime next week. Um, we will, of course, um, we've committed to sending out an email to folks and we're still committed to doing that to let you all know when it is launched. We are also just to follow up for those that were on the call because this is a good enough space to do it as any. Um, we have made updates to the demographic data that I know we'll talk about a little bit later specifically for our program based on the feedback that we got from Elaine and Little Manila. So thank you for that. We are also planning to get out to all of you um, some outreach materials that you can take in your capacity to let folks know about this program. Um, it, is a, um, it is intended really to um, be a pilot in the sense that it does not, as we will talk about later in the agenda, um, ask for any other qualifying information other than folks living in a disadvantaged community in the Valley. So it does not take into account, at least for eligibility's sake, um, any um, demographic data about income or health, but we are asking that data on the side just to collect it for future um, use um, and hopefully help us drive a little bit of the answers that we need. I'll kind of high level just quickly explain and then Janine if you can go into some detail about just how the program works because I think it will help us and we've been talking internally and we were so excited today to get like feedback from you all because I think it's helped us all that we've learned about air filtration um, in this particular sense of like distributing air filters in the past like handful of weeks I think has helped us think about how we can do it in Stockton um, but just generally how it works for those that aren't super aware is right now we're we're um, contracted with ACE Hardware and essentially we're having ACE Hardware send out an air filtration device to each person that goes through our portal and qualifies, meaning they go through our portal, they upload the document to prove they're in a disadvantaged community. Um, and then we have ACE essentially send them an air purifier and the whole process will take a, like a few weeks at most, hopefully that's the goal at least. Um, and so with that, I'm, we're happy to, as we kind of get through it um, later if need be, but we can even just go right into kind of the second part of the agenda that's about 
some of the program and how we can align it. Um, in that we've learned a lot about going through a particular retail. We've thought a lot about going through a wholesaler directly to the manufacturer. I know we've talked in this group a lot about modeling after other air districts who did like a contract and someone else ran the program. And so we think we can maybe align some of those today or get some feedback from you all today. Um, but like I said, as of now for this quick program that we're doing, it's through a retailer. It's direct to consumer, direct to folks. They're of course, if they can't take delivery at their own address, they're allowed to let us know where, what other address to send it to. So we've kind of thought about that and got feedback from you all on that. Um, but the idea is to get it out to folks as quickly as possible. So that's the best way that we found that we could do it in the short time frame that we gave ourselves. But obviously in this committee, we have the opportunity to, to make it a little bit different if we want. Janine, did I miss anything? Or Elaine, do you have questions? And maybe Janine can help answer about specifically about the program that we have now. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, can you clarify again? Um, I know like the way that it's broken up by different um, uh, county, um, that there's a certain population density for Stockton. And so what was the anticipation for um, air purifiers that y'all will be distributing out in the community? Let's bring that up. I always have it. Go ahead. Uh, current for the for the pilot program that we're launching. Is that what you're okay? Let me um let me bring it up. I've got so the way we did it was by county, not by community. Um, and yes, to your point, we did it by by percentage of the valley. So for example, San Joaquin County um and Fresno County and Kern County are all within the all, you know. 15 to 20 ish percent. So they got about 15 to 20 ish percent. And I'll have Janine pull up the actual data here in a second. It's oh, coming to 50. Um, there we go. Perfect. So the funding for San Joaquin County total, not Stockton, um, the whole county is, yeah, 46,000. And as a follow up to that, um, we're looking to prioritize communities outside the AB 617 boundaries, correct? Since there's the um, the opportunity, um, hopefully by January that we could be launching our program. Right. I, I mean, I wouldn't say that we're not, we're, I would say prioritize folks that we need to get to ASAP. Um, and I'm saying that because I would hate for, if we're, I'm a CBO and I work in Stockton and I know there's funding coming in January, but I also know there might be a wildfire tomorrow that impacts folks. Um, it's, it's something that we, we will hopefully learn from this pilot program and add more to it in our board. And I know with the support from all of you that work with us and work with Samir and work with our board, find a way to boost this for the Valley. Um, but I, I would hate to, even though, yes, we are getting 617 specific funding um, the goal is to get this in the households that we've identified, you know, need it the most. Go ahead, uh, Kevin. So, I mean, I, I'm looking forward to this program. I think it's great. I think the initial investment's a little low, I'll be honest with you, but uh, you got to start somewhere. So, uh, you know, I, again, I, I want to be sure people know, and Elaine, you know this very well, uh, regarding Cal AIM and asthma remediation for those families in the in the county. And we will be, uh, we now have a contract with Health Plan of San Joaquin to provide services uh, for their patients as well as Health Net. So all the, all the Medi-Cal folks in those two counties who have an asthma diagnosis. Now there is sort of qualifications for the program, but there is a sort of a side door we've learned we can slip in. So if they have somebody in that household that has asthma, which is pretty likely <laughs> given how prolific the disease is, you know, we are providing both air purifiers and these fans to those folks. So, and, you know, Medi-Cal will pay for that. So that's a big deal. Now, you know, how we get the word out there about that has been probably one of our biggest problems because we don't have a lot of money for marketing things and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think it's important to note that that 
that resource is available. And uh, we want to take full advantage of it for those high risk folks. Keep in mind, it's cradle to grave. This isn't just for children. This is for adults mm -hmm. and children both. And then we have we also have a number of these fan and filters uh, to pass out still, and and some will be coming uh, your way up there, Elaine. But um, you know, I, I really think, Jessica, it's important that we work together on this. You know, to to leverage our different assets here, rather than you know standing them up individually, and trying to make sure the word gets out to the right people. Uh, for instance, your communications stretch is a lot further and, and more robust than CCAC's is or anybody on this calls is other than maybe CARB. So, I mean, you know, letting people know that there's state programs available uh, is, I think, simple enough to do. You don't have to point it at us directly. You know, it's just important that they know this program's out there and the state has not done a really good job of letting people know about it. So I think that's, you know, that's really critical. So I was just throwing that out there as something that, you know, we're already doing and we can do more. And the, and the, the number is potentially endless because right. it's paid for by Medi-Cal. It's one of these folks benefits. I, so it's- Jenny, you know. <laughs> we were just having this conversation earlier today, similarly, yeah. of like, how do we make sure, obviously prioritizing people that need it is important, but also not like, let's save it for folks that don't, aren't eligible for other programs. Can you, uh, to, just so that we're aware, and maybe Janine, this, could, go ahead and ask your question and then I have a follow-up for yeah. Kevin. Yeah, well, it's more of just a, an idea based on what Kevin's talking about is adding maybe a link to information on our webpage for clean air rooms so that when somebody maybe doesn't get in in time, applications are closed or they don't qualify for one reason or another, they can link to other programs offering similar services in their area. Um, and this sounds like one of those types of things that would be great if there is a, and, and I, Kevin, I wanted to find out from you if there is a, a website we can point them to or um, a informational document we can attach to our website or something along those lines to provide them those additional uh, sure. resources. Yeah, we have, yeah, we can give you a, a, a handout that we've been using that was approved by the health plan uh, to uh, to give out to folks and to others who just want to get the word out. Yeah. I'll uh, talk to, you know, reach out to me later. And I'll hook you up with Gracie Ella Dines who leads the program. Okay. And you guys can can figure that out. Yeah, yeah that's we, fine. We have often done that in other programs where there might be a complementary state program or something along those lines. We will link to it or say for additional information or other sources of funding for this category, please see this website or this agency or you know this information. So I, I think we could definitely do that here and help to get that additional word out to residents that maybe don't qualify for our program or do, just don't make the cut because it is a relatively small pot um, to help them point them in the right direction. And then I think to Kevin's point, and I know this is a little beyond our Stockton discussion, but I think it's relevant, is the next, hopefully next expansion of this pilot program, which I agree with Kevin, it's super small and it might go really fast. Um, we, we coordinate the effort and it's more Kind of how we do with like tractors and there's like NRCS funding in our fund. like there's a coordinated effort to together make sure we cover as many people as possible and it's not so much as like oh when it runs out but like hey before you even apply to ours have you tried this not to de deflect but to make sure we have enough for the folks that don't qualify for the other one yeah uh, oh go ahead Elaine. go ahead Cynthia oh yeah we're just... on the same uh, page but go ahead sorry yeah, no, I was going to say, yeah, that sounds good. Great connections being made. So um, we could definitely maybe put that in the next step that Kevin or Jessica, you'll reach, or Stephanie, anybody from your team will reach out to Kevin and try to get some of that moving forward. But I know um, the next topic on our agenda is kind of aligning some of that eligibility for this pilot program with um, our eligibility for this program and definitely looking at that disadvantaged community aspect, um, but wanted to hone in on some of the 
characteristics. I know we last subcommittee meeting, we talked a little bit about some of the eligibility considerations with, um, of course, within the boundary, those who are living next to um, major sources of pollution that, are, that were identified as concerns, things like that. Uh, so Elaine, I'm not sure how we kind of want to take that and add the demographics talking piece as well. Yeah, thank you, Cynthia. I know we were talking about the beginning conversations at our last meeting. Um, this is not something that we're going to complete today, but beginning that conversation on what that looks like and how we're going to develop that um, before. Hopefully, I think we talked about a timeline uh, early January to get this all kicked off and ready to go for the new year. Um, and so uh, kind of refreshing ourselves on uh, what we talked about last time, which was um, did we want to align similarly with the clean air program as a pilot? What kind of eligibility does that look like? Um, I know uh, we talked about um, potential criteria, um, who's in most need. Um, do we want to look at um, uh, areas that uh, folks may be near known uh, sources of pollution, which is very similar to the San Diego um, and EHC program um, that we have come across in the past. Um, railroads, ports, things like that, knowing that Stockton is a port community. Um, do we also want to include like health uh, as an indicator, like as a management, um, language barriers, financial barriers, things like that, but that could also be part of our collection of data um, to, to be able to understand other needs that may be in the community. So maybe I'll just offer, and this is a conversation again, because we've learned so much about our, our own like capacity and kind of the realm of possibilities from all the research and connections we've made with you all, but also the stuff that we've done recently. We had some, some thoughts related to this. And the first is that I think there needs to be, and I think you all agree and understand this, that the CS, the not that there aren't subpopulations and sub exposures within the community, but there was sort of a an understanding when this this committee who finalized you all you know created the boundary essentially for Stockton really acknowledged that Stockton was selected because the census tracts ranked high in a variety of different ways and ranked high in Cal and virus screen and are among the most polluted and exposure or most overburdened in population characteristics, including linguistic ice, all of sort of the different characteristics, maybe differently for different census tracts within the community, but overall was selected because it is already globally within that boundary, the highest out of California in a variety of ways. So one of the thoughts that we had was first to just acknowledge, of course, we know there's gonna be folks within the boundary that aren't gonna be economically, you know, um, um, you know, maybe aren't ranking kind of on the, the low income scale, but are in other ways exposed or in other ways isolated. And also recognizing that the way that an efficient program to get just like as many as we can as quickly as possible to folks, um, if we have so many different factors that we're prioritizing by, it's not really a a situation where folks can like apply and then keep going. It's almost like, okay, do we rank and prioritize by a variety of factors and then do kind of like a solicitation and we wait to hand anything out? That kind of precludes us from doing an event like a like we talked about where we hand them out with lawnmowers. So we were kind of thinking like a hybrid approach where there's almost like two, like a sub bucket of funding within the bucket that is set aside and prioritized by some of the demographics you all have outlined, where it's a where it's a set aside fund within the million dollars that no matter what, you know, 200,000 is saved just for folks that are low income and or, you know, a variety of other th thoughts that you all had. And then the like 800,000 is for anyone in the boundary, knowing that everyone in the boundary is impacted. And that lets us do a couple of things. One, it allows us to track, and to your point, we're still collecting demographic data for everyone, but allows us to track and understand, okay, are we hitting the right tones and, and, and targeting the right folks? Um, but also allows us to say, hypothetically, we get that 800,000 is drawn down with all folks that aren't low income and don't have asthma for whatever reason, which I think to, is almost impossible within that boundary to not have some, one of those things, unfortunately. 
Um, but it allows us to say, don't worry, everyone, we still have a reserve. Like we did not let, you know, folks that could otherwise afford it spend all the funding. We still have this reserve for people. Um, I don't know if that exact breakdown is the right balance, but that was our thought. That way we can get going on a project. We can still hold events where we're passing out lawnmowers and air purifiers as long as you qualify and you live in the boundary and that's your qualification. Um, so we could still do events like that, but we can also separately use that almost separate pot of funding to work with the CDOs who do all of this work and say, don't worry, you know, yes, we've expended the funds here, but we still have this special pot for this, like really, you know, this group that needs it even more than anyone else. And so I'll just, maybe I'll see if there's general thoughts there. I know that's not a super fleshed out idea with numbers, but just kind of an overall thought an approach. And the reason I think getting a little bit of feedback from you all on this is in order to get this to launch in January, we still have to, I know it's a little on the agenda, we still have to finalize and submit a project plan to CARB and we want to take something to our board. And both of those things, we don't have to have 100% of the details, but we want to have some of the details. And I think deciding generally how we're going to approach first come first serve versus prioritization is one of the things our board and CARB will want to know. Uh, from my side of things too, with like uh, reviewing the project plans, like the more details that we can have, not set in stone, but like, you know, broadly figured out uh, yeah. ahead of time, the better, because then we can discuss those things earlier and work on it. Oh, you already know this, Jessica, you're already doing this with other project plans, you know what's up. No, it's a good reminder though, Kyle, I appreciate it. It also helps that I'm the lead staff on campus and it's usually I'm much more removed in the review process and creation process of project plans. So I like to think me being here can sort of help things move smoothly and quickly. We like so too, that's why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, awesome. and I see Margo with uh, her hand raised. Yeah, so hi. Um... I think that's a good idea. I like that idea. I don't, I don't think your ratio is, you know, I would give a, I would put more in the set aside bucket, um, maybe a whole lot more in the set aside bucket, but, um, and yeah, that makes it flow really nicely. It still means coming up with the criteria for that bucket, but, um, but it's good. And one thing I'll say too is, and I agree with you, Margo, if we set aside a little bit more, we can just track it, come back to this group and say, hey, look, the funding's not going down. Obviously, it's either A, it's a combination of we need better outreach for that particular subgroup, or B, maybe it's not, maybe it's a little too restrictive and then we can reassess mm -hmm. and come back or shift some funding to the general, like that helps us a little bit track it. I, I do want to keep in mind too, though, Kevin's, um connection with health plan and health net is exactly. that's huge that's yep. huge and you don't want to both, both health plan and, and health and both health net and health plan of san joaquin both right right that yeah that's what i said yeah because they're both the medicals here um and we don't want to double do so mm -hmm. at every event you're going to have to ask the question you know we can't pry into people's lives but um if they're covered they should be they should have a resource to go to to get it covered elsewhere. Just food for thought. It's super important. Yeah, thank you, Marco. And I think just uh, thinking about how can we equitably do this for the community, like we get to really understand what the community needs are. Um, and um, I think that's a really great point to, to maybe have a larger ratio for the community that is in most need. Um, understanding what does Medi-Cal uh, beneficiaries or if they have that uh, have that opportunity to be able to refer them out to um, CCAC um, and be able to give that opportunity but um, also understanding for those who don't have uh, Medi-Cal like how do we prioritize them um, thinking about who's most vulnerable um, and yeah really finding out like what's the best criteria that we can do for our our pilot program for this program um, and then um, figuring out what does that next phase look like. Um, and then I think circling back to demographics, being able to include that in um, the criteria as well um, so that we can understand um, uh, more so like the data in our community. As I mentioned, we, we have some funding uh, 
for unins uninsured folks as well. Not and a ton, but you uh, we'll that use it until it's gone. I'm sorry? You mentioning that prompted another question we had, and just you all have a better sense than we do, and maybe it's part of the work you all do. Do you have a sense, are there folks out there that aren't in these programs because they not only are uninsured, but haven't even brought themselves to a doctor to get the diagnosis? And are there folks that are going to be like, I mean, I know that's a lot of work that I think you all do in trying to understand and make sure they have the diagnosis or folks are having trouble. Is there a sense out there that, um, you know, some of this outreach might have to be really specific and really targeted and, and not so restrictive? And I think we're approaching that nice balance of not being too restrictive with the other bucket, but just wanted to get a sense from you if that's even like a population that we feel is a large population of kind so of- So those folks are there, the health centers, uh, as you know, I spent 10 years in the health center working with this population. Um, the health centers have a sliding scale specifically for this group. Uh, we run into a lot of these folks. They'll be in the households of the folks that are on Medi-Cal and they will mm -hmm. be adults mainly who are uninsured, but not always just adults. Uh, some of them actually qualify for services, but didn't know it, or they're right. afraid that it affects, uh, that it's a public charge and it'll interfere with their ability to get a green card or become citizens, which is wrong, but they don't know that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a lot more complicated than just that, yeah. uh, which is why, you know, we have uh, happily and Kaiser Family Foundation was, uh, has funded us now uh, seven years in a row to provide uh, services for uninsured folks yeah. uh, who, who don't know. Uh, part of what the team does is help them build confidence to go uh, and visit a provider and get an appropriate diagnosis, which is, again, while well, I said, don't worry about that so much as, you know, if they've got a breathing problem, whatever, and they're referred to us, we'll, we'll make sure they get taken care of. You know, yeah. we'll make sure they get where they need to be and, uh, and get the services that they need. But, uh, you know, like you say, you can't just flat out ask people. It, it becomes about community, you know, trusted messengers. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I think the Air District should be working with the local CBOs like uh, Little Manila Rising to, you know, to, to fund them to, to do some of this outreach in these communities. And, and uh, they're going to know or the people that they already work with, they're going to know who that is and Not find them. Offer, and, we have that, yeah. the, the, mini grants are open and maybe once we launch this that'll be an easier way for little manila or whoever to then have a targeted mini grant application to us and we would we would totally fund that to kevin's point we would yeah, fund so up to the, up to them i i think you you got to reach a little higher sadly uh because you know most of the cbos and again we fall in this category all of your ftes are in pretty hard pretty heavily encumbered uh through various budgets that are paying mm -hmm. for them. And so mm -hmm. uh, most of my folks are at about 110 or 20% of, of mm -hmm. what they, uh, you know, more work than we're actually paid for. So adding things, you know, with five grand here, 10 grand there, I don't want to speak for anybody, but it, you know, it, it you know, it, it's, it's not really adequate, especially for a long-term effort. If you really are invested in this, you've got to, you know, think more long-term, you know, we want, I don't want to pop in and then leave and then nothing's there. I'm mm -hmm. really averse to those kinds of approaches because we've done that. We've put up programs, funding ends, and then they go away. And then, you know, you just leave the community hanging. People are just getting used to, to it and it's gone. So, you know, how do we, you know, how do you use programs like this in an agency, whether it's CARB, by the way, I'm not letting you guys off the hook <laughs> on this, or the Air District or any other agency that's going to be there tomorrow. You know, you're not going anywhere. So, you know, them being the sort of the core support for that kind of effort has always made sense to me. It doesn't so much, I think, to them, but it, I mean, there's very few other groups that are around like that, that are going to be here. And then, in fact, are mm -hmm. wanting to reach these folks. So, uh, uh, you know, the old put your money where your mouth is kind of thing. Yeah, yeah no thanks, Kevin. I, mean I think in the kindest kind of way. <laughs> yeah, I think you have some really good ideas, Kevin, and I think we can put this on an agenda item for the next subcommittee meeting to identify some ways that um, 
we can in include all of the resources that you have um, and kind of merge that together. But I know one of the goals that it's not just said. us, by the way. There's there's others that, that we know about out yeah, there. There's help, a whole side of this in the CBO world that yeah, we the can air side doesn't folks. touch much. Yeah, we can connect with folks who have received some similar funding as you have and um, try to maybe that could be the goal for the next subcommittee meeting to try to hone in on partnerships and ways that we can also expand on that. But I know for this subcommittee meeting, we kind of one of our goals was to come to a closer consensus on some of this program eligibility items um, and try to begin some discussions on CBO distributors and um, weatherization issues that have come up with some unresponsiveness from the county. Um, but we'll definitely add that to the agenda item and follow up with you, Kevin, on ways to kind of collaborate with not only CCAC, but other folks that have received funding. And I see um, Elaine and Janine have their hands up. So go ahead, Elaine, and then Janine. Thanks, Cynthia, and thanks, Kevin. Yeah, I was going to say, like, thinking about this distributor uh, section on our agenda, that could be a perfect way to segue into that if there aren't any other things to, um, uh, if there are other items that we wanted to get to in our um, current agenda item as well. So I just to note on something that Kevin had mentioned about the groups that may be hesitant to kind of put themselves on the radar with a government agency uh, for fear of some, you know, un Fear of, of various things. Um, I think that's where community, the community events come in, where we are in person handing out devices, um, mm -hmm. as opposed to them submitting all their information and do uploading documents into an, you know, an unknown portal. Um, mm -hmm. They can show up in person. Their community representatives are there. There's, you know, it, it's it just brings a completely different light to it, and I think this is, you know, kind of ties into that next topic of distribution of devices. Um, I think that, you know, some of our conversations here uh, internally have been uh, very much in favor of a hybrid approach where we are doing some sort of direct ship to uh, applicants and then holding some uh, community events that might be tied to other uh, programs such as lawn and garden. And I think that is going to be a fundamental way to reach some of the hardest to reach uh, folks that might be a, a little fearful. Like we've dealt with a lot of that in our programs, um, even from big companies where they're like, ooh, I don't believe this is real. You're not really giving me something for free, or you're not really giving me that much money in a grant. Um, and so we do have some um, experience breaking those barriers down. And I think those community events are key to that. Um, one other thing I just like to toss out there in the considerations to chew on over the next uh, period of time is um, what type of device we want to target for the program. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of, do we want a device that is lowest cost so that we can get as many units out as possible? Or do we want to look at devices that will cover the greatest square footage so it's not just a single room in the house, but maybe the entire house is covered by that device? Um, there are a variety of eligible devices out there. And I think that's something to really consider, especially if you've got a multi-generational household, which a lot of lower income families will be multi-generational households. You could have multiple people in the house that need that benefit. And you know, we were talking here like at night, who gets the device in their room if it only covers 150 square feet? Um, so maybe um, some thought um, over the next, uh, between now and the next meeting as to that it does mean a higher cost device um, and fewer devices deployed, but I still think there's some significant benefits to considering that option as well. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and drop into the chat um, as well a link that uh, RAM provided for our asthma mitigation program on different uh, clean um, air cleaners uh, that we can utilize that is CARB certified. Um, and does not have any ionizers and are under a 250. And so if that is a baseline we wanted to look into as we're like thinking about research for uh, the devices that we'll be using. Yeah, thanks Janine. I think that's a really good question and consideration and um, something that we can add to maybe the next subcommittee agenda item and flag that for folks to kind of think about that and come ready with some kind of um, research and some uh, ideas, like give it a little time to sit on it. I think that's a great question for 
the next one. Um, but I think, yeah, going back to some of the eligibility and demographics tracking, um, I think I'm, I, I would agree with Margot where the ratio needs to be definitely a lot more for the, that criteria, um, that criteria that we're interested in reaching. I think if we do something similar like the Valley Air District does like the proof of residency, it'd be really easy to identify uh, major sources of pollution next to those kind of homes since we do have so many maps that um, we've created through the 617 process. And I think it'd just be like a cross-referencing kind of thing. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, Valley Air District, if that's something that could be done with the proof of residency, identify the sources of concern that communities have identified. Uh, certainly, I think I, something I just want to offer, I think uh, I, when you're saying sources of concern, I imagine we're talking about the actual emissions inventory, like what sources are creating like the most pollution, because sources of concern, which I think I, I, and I'll work with my team because I, I hear you, I think technically to your point, it should be like, it's kind of a no brainer in a sense that we can just take a map see on the map where we think the highest priority need is. And then if folks fall within that sub map, I think that makes sense to me. Um, I think we, and maybe between now and the next meeting, we get together as a group and kind of the, all of these bigger thoughts as we layer them and overlap them, like how detailed are we getting? Is it an and or, like is it low income and in this subgroup? and have asthma like are we layering all of these because I feel I fear we're getting up really specific um and it might be a little too cumbersome I also fear once again just kind of putting out there for example the highest um air pollution sources just in ranking are on-road mobile sources and then off-road mobile sources which exposure wise even within a mile of those sources is the entire boundary so I do think that what you're talking about makes sense to me, but I think if we're talking about the boundary, that's sort of how the boundary was created. And so I wonder if there's something um, to be said. Now, maybe if we're saying like the port area gets something, like we identify one area that's maybe a little higher priority, that makes sense. But I think if we're thinking inventory, that's really the whole boundary. I mean, the heavy duty trucks alone on the main, sort, main freeways almost touch within you know, a mile of almost everyone. So that's just something to think about. And then also to think about what layers are we at? Is it the location and low income and asthma, or is it one or one of the three gets you high priority? Just kind of thinking about that would be great too. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I think if we think about it in terms of like just general exposure to pollution, I think we all should be getting an air filter um everybody here in the valley should be getting one but i think maybe we can do something like um concentrated sources of pollution or concentrated pollution where they're getting impacted by the port where they're getting impacted by a freeway where um they see a lot of like truck traffic i don't know how we can maybe hone in on that but maybe some extra concentrated sources might be a better like geographical way to get to your kind of question uh, Jessica, I'm not sure if what other folks think um, on how we can kind of address address that without, you know, the issues that are questions that Jessica brought up. Well, I, I think if we I, if we truly do identify a locate a, a spot, a hot spot, um, you know, we we're saying the whole area is a hot spot, but if there we we really truly identify those, those almost have to be door to door. Um, outreach because otherwise you know are they going to come to your event how do you how are you going to reach them i don't know how you would do it i also maybe we'll drop into the chat we already have those maps i think it's kind of hits at cynthia's point of like hot spot when you said hot spot margo it reminded me of the layers we have on those maps that identify those squares that are the darkest and we can totally do that i might ask my team if they can within that identify how many homes are in those squares because I, I'm also hearing what I'm hearing. And I think based on the amount, we have a lot of funding. And so I'm hearing based on the amount of funding we have, I think, um, it's cool, I'm getting thumbs up from that. I think we'll find that we'll have certainly plenty to like set aside for those, but it, it won't be, if we're gonna really hone in, it won't be that much. But I think what I'm hearing more so isn't necessarily eligibility criteria, 
but our goals for outreach and door to door to Margot's point, because I don't know how like social media or, or flyers isn't going to get us those hotspots. It's going to be to Margot's point, like we're, we're knocking on those, like the, that block, it might be a city block. You know what I mean? Yeah, and thinking to Kevin's point about like organizations, uh, even such as ourselves who are in the community who uh, could use a capacity uh, to, to be able to do the door knocking, canvassing, things like that, being on the ground um, and being able to, to support organizations such as ourselves, Upstara, to be able to do that on the ground work. I'm gonna talk with our team, just like hearing kind of where we're at right now and knowing we have a couple minutes about the question about, can we take a look at our maps and kind of identify what that looks like? Also what I'm hearing, and it's part of the, the discussion is partnering with CBO distributors, talking about maybe delineating distribution from outreach and maybe separate from our mini grants within this, can we have like a work, like a, an air filtration partner that does all of this really specific work with us and we figure out, we'll talk a little bit more internally and we still maybe do this hybrid events where the outreach partner helps us, but also direct to people if needed. I'll, I'll get uh, all the from our team. I think that sounds good given we have about four more minutes for our meeting. Um, let's definitely um, table instead of calling it CBO distributors, but as you were mentioning, um, just about calling it um cbo air filtration partners or yeah, like, something like that something yeah. something like that or something that the community can understand what that looks like and um we can um, build that out um as part of our conversation um i know we're pressed for time is uh the other items on our our list uh something that uh, we need to know for this immediate meeting or can we table that um and go straight into next steps and questions I'll just, maybe I'll give you two quick updates. Um, unless Kyle had any separate update about the implementation plan, that that plan will be, that's from us to CARB and CARB does not have that yet because of all of these details, as he mentioned. So we will get that out to you before we get it to CARB. Um, and then the engaging with San Joaquin how, uh, Human Services Agency, we're all ears in case anyone has asked um, any questions or I know so, some folks said they might have some connections. Um, it's not that just high level, they have a weatherization program. It is open and available. We have had trouble on our end getting on the phone with a person um, to ask some questions because we would like to bring some outreach materials to the community. Um, and so um, we haven't been able to engage. That doesn't mean we still can't tell people about the program. Um, but we'll continue on our end and loop you all in if we hear otherwise. So that's just our end update. Yeah, um, I also wanted to ask Apsara, who does uh, who does enrollment for weatherization, if that is something um, you all have outreach material on that we could share with the committee. Hi, uh, yes. Um, we honestly, we don't have any um, outreach material and um, and we we are interested in to um, uh, get support or or receive the um, outreach material and uh, like to look at it and uh, possibly um, uh, translate it if that's appropriate if you know um, so that's where we at right now. Um, can I, can I, add, I know we're a little over time, Lynn, can I mm -hmm. ask a quick question of Anthony? Uh -huh. you, so if you do enrollment for weather station, do you have a contact that you work with at the county, uh, at that particular health or the human services agency? Um, because we reached out right when we kicked off this subcommittee, had a little bit of trouble getting contact. And then the feedback we got was pretty, um, not as engaged as I think we would have hoped. And I'm wondering if maybe, maybe they're stretched thin. I totally understand that's happened in the pandemic. Do you have someone that you work with that you can maybe drop in the chat their contact information or send an email to us so we can help follow up? Because I agree with you, we'd like to help be the conduit, get the outreach materials and get it to you all. Um, to be honest with you, I don't know. And I can find out from uh, my program manager. And um, yeah, so yeah. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Anthony. And uh, we'll definitely follow up with that as well. Um, 
are there any other items from weatherization? Kyle, any updates on um, from CARB that we wanna include in um, before moving on to uh, quick questions and next steps? Uh, not really any updates for me in that area. Great, thank you. Um, and thank you all for some additional time that will be going over just a few minutes. Um, so uh, our next steps really is uh, Kevin and Jessica or and team are gonna connect on the Valley Air pilot program. Cynthia and myself are gonna follow up with Kevin on collaborations available. Um, and we do have some next agenda items, which is uh, collaborations with CBOs, uh, with other similar resources, what resources are out there that we could plug in into this program um, and see that alignment um, and honing in on the devices. Um, and definitely looking forward to continuing on the conversation about the CBO air filtration partners and what that looks like, outreach and uh, canvassing and on the ground. Is there anything else uh, that um, I am missed or things uh, folks have said that we wanna um, circle back to? Alrighty, righty, well, thank, oh, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, just quick question that I didn't add on to the next steps is if Jessica, would you be able to have some of that like mapping information available for the next subcommittee meeting? Do you think would be something that we can add on here as well for the yeah. next yeah. items? Awesome. So, yeah, thanks, Cynthia. Yeah, thanks for putting that down. So that helps us. Great, well, thank you everyone. Really appreciate your one minute over time and we will see you all at the next um, meeting in September, I believe is our next um, subcommittee meeting. Um, and y'all have a good rest of the day. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, stay cool everybody. You Bye. too, take care. Bye. Bye. Bye everybody.